y'all, today's project is another project for wearing underneath your clothes. We are going to be making a half slip. And I might be a little old fashioned in liking to have slips, but there are a few reasons that I wear and use them. Number one, if you have a slip to put under something, you don't have to worry about lining dresses that are semi-sheer or skirts that are semi-sheer because you can just throw on the slip. Number two, I've used um, swimsuit lining fabric to make mine. So it's comfortable and soft, but it's also kind of cool in the summer, and that definitely helps because I live someplace where it's hot. And number three, these are super easy to make, so there's really no reason not to go ahead and make your own. And then of course you can get a better fit when you're making it yourself instead of trying to hunt one down at the store. So let's gather up supplies and I'll meet you back at the camera to talk about how we're going to make this. Okay, let's go ahead and talk supplies. You're going to need fabric for your slip. This is um, swimsuit lining that I got in the swimsuit fabric section of the store. And I bought it in this kind of peachy color because that matches my skin tone pretty well. And then it shows through on less of my garments. You're also going to need elastic. This is half inch wide knit elastic and you want it to be enough to go around your waist. So let's talk about how to determine the size for the two rectangles that I've cut here for the slip. First, you want to measure around your hips, which is the fullest part of your body, not your actual hip bones, but the fullest part, including your seat. And you want to multiply that number times 1.25. That's going to give you enough room in this slip so it doesn't feel tight and so that you can walk, but not so much room that it messes up style lines on your garment that you're wearing on top. So take that number, the um, hip circumference multiplied times 1.25, divide that number in two, and that is the width of each of your square or rectangles. You're going to want them that wide. For height, what you want to do is you want to take a measuring tape, hold it up to your waist, and then kind of dangle it where you think you want the slip to end. Remembering that you want your slip to be a little bit shorter than whatever you're wearing on top so that it's not hanging out the bottom and peeking through, especially if your skirt moves or if it's full or a circle skirt. When it moves, you want to have an, at least an inch shorter slip. So take whatever measurement you want from your waist to where you want your slip to hit, Add one inch to that measurement because we're going to need some of that on top for the casing and some of it on bottom for the hem. Next, let's go ahead and sew this. The first step is going to be to sew the side seams. Now since I'm working with a stretch fabric, I'm going to need to sew with a stretch stitch. So if you don't know about stretch stitching, check out the link in the description below and I've got another video that explains all different kinds of stretch stitches that you can use. I will be using my serger to stitch this up, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll meet you back here at the camera and show you what's next. Okay, I went ahead and sewed down the side seams of my slip and while I was at it I also sewed my elastic into a loop. I just overlapped the ends and sewed with a zigzag stitch to secure them together. So the next step is going to be to attach the waistband to the slip. And in order to do that, we're going to want to mark quarters on our elastic and on the slip. So I'm just folding my elastic in half. I've got the overlap part where I sewed it together on one end, and the other end is the front. And then I'm going to match those. I'm going to match the seam and the pin that I used. You don't have to use a pin. You can use a fabric marker or chalk, just something so that you know where essentially where the side seams are going to go. Now, since I have side seams on my skirt, I don't need to mark those. I just need to fold this to match them together and then mark the center front and the center back. Once I have all of that marked, what we want to do is just pick one side that's going to be the back and you want to match the elastic up with the edge of the elastic and the edge of the fabric. And then the next quarter will go 
to the seam line, and so on. Make sure that as you do this that you're not twisting the elastic. And now what we want to do is we are going to stitch that elastic to the waist and that's going to cause the waist to gather in. I'm going to take you over to my sewing machine this time so you can see how to do it. Okay, what I'm going to do is put the elastic under the foot. I've got my machine set up for a zigzag stitch and I'm going to hold the next quartered area and I'm going to pull the elastic until it is flat against the fabric. And then if that's too far away for me to hold comfortably and sew, I'm going to move my hand up and then just hold from there and I'll move down in a little bit. But I'm just going to zigzag stitch right on top of the elastic. And then stretch the next section and continue this way all around. Now when I get back all the way around, what I'm going to want to do is flip the elastic. I'm going to put the needle down and I want to straddle that um, flip so that it's lined up right in the center of my foot. And I'm going to pull on the elastic again to get it flattened and stitch right over that edge. To hem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the elastic, or sorry, fold the fabric up half an inch and I'm just going to zigzag a hem onto it. 